For years, I've reviewed 27-inch 1080p monitors and generally steered clear thanks to the lower pixel density. But it's been a while and ViewSonic sent me this one, the XG2705, which appears to be a very nice option. So let's see if anything's changed or if they're still worth, well, steering clear of. But first, if you haven't already, consider subscribing for more videos like this one every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. So what's the big deal then? I mean, 1080p 27 inches looks fine, so what's a few more inches? Ha. Well, actually quite a lot. When you're looking at content, whether that's videos or whether that's text especially, it can be pretty obvious the, the size of the pixels that you can see, and in fact you can almost see them individually, and it's just honestly not the, the most crisp thing I've seen. Now when I say you can see the pixels, what I mean there is that they are so relatively large that it's pretty obvious where each pixel is relatively, and therefore the, the lack of crispness. Now, the numbers for the, the size of the pixels kind of proves this. Uh, at 27 inches at 1080p, the pixels are around about 0.31 millimeters uh, square, if you like, whereas at 24 inch, they're around 0.27 millimeters. For context, if you went with a same size 27 inch monitor but 1440p instead, those pixels are just 0.23 millimeters. So for the same size display, you're looking at about 30% larger pixels. What I found interesting is that while web browsing, you know, reading text or even watching videos, I could very easily notice that the density, when I fired up CSGO, I stopped noticing. It really was very easy to immerse myself in the game and care more about where the players are and you know what I was doing in game rather than the each of the individual pixels that you can almost clearly see on the panel. It does help that this ViewSonic one does seem to be a very nice option. Not only is it 144 hertz at 1080p, but it's also an IPS panel as well. It's also an incredibly fast monitor overall. The input lag I think is around eight milliseconds at the center of the display, which is incredibly impressive. And the response time of the panel, at least black to white, was around three milliseconds, which is also incredible for an IPS display. Now that was with the sub one millisecond uh, option in the menus enabled, which does disable FreeSync. And I should mention that the release time, the white to black time, was a lot slower, somewhere between 11 and 14 milliseconds, which does mean that in terms of ghosting, you might get a bit of sort of trailing edge ghosting, especially when going from a light image to a dark one, but not so much when going from a dark to a light image. Of course, being an IPS means that the colors are rather nice. It gives an extra bit of vibrance to games that does help mask that lower pixel density. Um, using my Spider X, it reported a coverage of about 100% of the sRGB spectrum, which is great to see, and around 75 to 80% of both the DCI-P3 and Adobe RGB spectrums, which while not the best I've seen, especially for an IPS panel, is more than enough for a gaming monitor and general content consumption, and even a bit of content creation on the side, if you prefer. As a note on brightness, I think you're looking at about 340 nits at peak, which, while again not enough for any level of HDR, is still plenty for your average usage. FreeSync is also a useful addition. Now, like I mentioned, if you enable the sub one millisecond mode on in the menus, then that does seem to disable FreeSync, but if you do have it enabled, then you do get a very nice, very smooth and responsive experience, and most importantly, tear-free, which again helps to alleviate the stress of the lower pixel density. So if you're planning on spending your entire time gaming, then it seems like you can get over the density problem. But what about the price? This monitor is selling for around about £300 at the UK in the time of filming, which is a full £100, in fact over £100 more than a number of other 1080p, 144Hz, 24-inch, even IPS options. And for your money, I'm not entirely sure what you're getting as an extra, as a bonus here. You're getting a fairly standard monster. Now, in terms of the adjustability, you do get everything you would expect. A good amount of height adjust, a good amount of tilt, uh, swivel, as well as rotation to put it in portrait mode if you prefer, which actually, since the viewing angles are pretty good in this, isn't the worst idea. You also get a fairly limited set of inputs, only two HDMIs and one display port, no USB 3 hubs here, 
And otherwise, there's not that many extra bells and whistles. Sure, you get the sub one millisecond mode in the menu and you get free sync as well, but that's fairly standard across a number of different options. And so I'm not entirely sure why you would spend this much more for what I could only see as a less desirable panel. Personally, I would much rather pick up something like the AOC 24G2U, which is still a 1080p 144Hz IPS monitor, still has FreeSync, it's just as fast and responsive and smooth as this one, but more importantly has the more desirable, for me anyway, 24 inch size for 1080p, and is over a hundred pounds less than this. If you want to stick with 27 inches, then I would either go with a VA panel 1440p monitor for a pretty similar price, think AOC 24 27 G2X, or I would go with a Gigabyte Fi 27Q, which while is a good bit more expensive, is also IPS 165 hertz, I think, uh, and has FreeSync as well as is 1440p. While I am surprised just how little I was bothered by the pixel density while gaming, it's still something that I can't overly recommend, at least for me personally. Now with that said, I'm only looking at this from, from my viewpoints here, and I, I know that there is some level of market for this style of monitor, and so if you have a, a different viewpoint here, I would love to hear it in the comments down below, because like I said, I appreciate there is a market for this, I just don't currently understand why. Now, if you wanna check out the ViewSonic XG2705, then take a look at the top link in the description down below. That's an Amazon affiliate link that will take you to your local Amazon store where you can see pricing when and where you watch this because it can and does vary. And hey, it might even be cheaper than what I've been talking about here by the time you end up watching this video. So maybe it'll be a better option. Either way, you can check that out. Also, like I said, I would love to hear your thoughts in the comments down below. What do you think of 27 inch 1080p monitors? What do you think of this one in particular? Anything at all, do leave that down below. And if you want to support the channel in more ways than just watching these videos and subscribing, then you can take a look at the rest of the links in the description down below too. There's merch for hoodies or t-shirts like this one if you want to rock a cool uh, sort of RTX 2060 on your shirt or a load of other stuff. There's also a load of other affiliate links down there from people like Overclocks UK if you're buying from them. There is Streamlabs OBS if you want to start streaming and a couple of VPN options down there too. And you can also check out some more videos over there. I'm going to leave the monitor reviews playlist or at very least some of the AOC monitor reviews uh, that I've talked about in this video and the end cards. And that is pretty much it. If you have any questions, feel free to leave those in the comments down below, but otherwise we'll see you all in the next video.